I really, really like being pregnant. Beth Anderson is a married mother of two and twice a surrogate. She not only loves being pregnant, but loves helping out families-to-be by carrying a donated egg to term for them. Most surrogates develop a relationship with their parents um, and have continued contact afterward. Stories like Beth's are becoming more common. The American Society of Reproductive Medicine found gestational surrogate births more than doubled in the last 10 years, with each surrogate making around $20,000 to $35,000. While the medical field has advanced the ease and safety of surrogacy, state policy has lagged behind since the Baby M case. In 1986, surrogate Mary Beth Whitehead and intended parents William and Elizabeth Stern battled for child custody in and out of court. At the heart of the problem, Whitehead and the Stearns did what's known as traditional surrogacy, using Whitehead's own egg and creating a legal headache for state policymakers. New York was one of the states that after the infamous Baby M case moved to outlaw surrogacy altogether, and that has existed ever since. Brad Hoyleman is a New York State Senator working on passing a bill that will secure paid contracts for surrogates in the state. What it does is legalize gestational surrogacy, which is a technology um, whereby the egg is fertilized outside of the womb and implanted in a third party carrier. We can actually have surrogates carry children who are not genetically related to them. If the Child Parent Security Act passes in New York, we'll have uh, surrogates who could actually uh, engage um, with intended parents and egg donors and uh, create families. Since the surrogate isn't genetically related to the baby, like the Baby M case, the woman simply carries the child to term. But the exchange of money for pregnancy still worries many. We don't want to turn procreation, baby making into a commerce industry. Jennifer Lal is president of the Center for Bioethics and Culture and producer of several documentaries on what she calls the commercial exploitation driving surrogacy. If you're looking at the women who are doing this for pay, um, not the altruistic, you know, and I think the altruistic side of, of this equation is very slim because how many women are going to really, you know, give their body, their whole body for nine months of a pregnancy? Um, so, but when you're looking at the women who are actually being paid uh, and compensated for this, it's a class issue. I mean, you look at Hollywood. I mean, it's the celebrities are hiring surrogates. You don't ever see the celebrities offering to be the surrogate. I consider it a symbiotic relationship. You know, they need, they need help. This is something that I want to do. And it's a way for me to make a little bit of extra money that has helped with our savings. It, you know, it helped pay for this house. It's, and which are things that would not have been possible without it. For Lal, pregnancy is too complicated for contracts to work. This isn't just entering into a contract because I have a car and I, you want to buy a car and I have a car to sell. This is a human being. This is a new life. Um, so I think, you know, we're, we're naive in thinking that um, this is just, uh, we can iron all this out as adults and have contracts and anticipate every problem because um, that, that isn't really how the real world happens. Law isn't wrong that contracts aren't perfect, but it's the way states make surrogacy contracts difficult that is the main cause of problems. Virginia is a right to life state, so if the surrogate delivers in Virginia, the surrogate has 30 days to claim the kid as hers. So because she, bio she delivered for the state of Virginia, she is the mother. Dr. Sharar is founder and director of the Virginia Center for Reproductive Medicine. While his practice sees surrogates from all over the country, they must deliver in a state friendly to surrogacy contracts. Any couple who's looking into surrogacy knows that there are very strong laws that are out there that will protect them and will protect the surrogate. We don't want the surrogate to steal their baby and we don't want anyone to actually abuse the surrogate. So the legal framework is there to protect the parties, and this is very critical. We really haven't studied um, the impact on families. I was a pediatric nurse for 20 years. Um, I've seen and interviewed surrogates who had little children in the home, and the impact on little children when they see their moms having babies and giving them away. What is the impact on little children that are so concrete in their thinking that wonder, wow, when will mom give me away to a nice lady who needs a baby? Um, or why is mommy giving away my brother or sister? It's all in the way that you, that you phrase things. It's all in the way that you put it. You know, my children knew from you know, day one, from the day I filled out applications for agencies, 
you know, this was something we talked about with the second time around, you know, my kids were old enough that, you know, we actually sat down before we did it and said, you know, we're thinking about helping another mommy and daddy. What are your thoughts? And they said, that's fine. And then ran off and played, <laughs> you know, um, it's not something that, that they care about. You know, I mean, they're, they're very invested in, in the pregnancy once you start showing and, and that kind of stuff, but all that other nonsense, they're like, oblivious to. And as same-sex marriages become more common, new demand for families will push the surrogacy debate further. Brad Hoyleman believes his bill will give parents-to-be in New York the same joy as his daughter gives him. My husband and I, uh, after getting married, decided we wanted to start a family. We did research on the issue and found out that California is one of those states where the law is very clear, uh, where we could um, find a surrogate, uh, enter into a contract with her and an egg donor and begin the process. My daughter is only three and a half. Uh, she's as happy and bright and funny and mischievous as any three and a half year old I know. For people suffering from infertility, surrogacy is their last hope. For me, this would be an area where I would say, if you can't have a child, um, then then pursue you know other other avenues. Women want to experience having their own children, and it's only after a lot of had a lot of heartaches that they and uh, that they finally agree that maybe the only way moving forward is to use surrogacy.